So the reason that this gets its own topic when it comes to extracting things from these textures is that there's a few different ways that you can do it. And depending on how the assets have been provided for you, which depending on your art team or the project you're working on may not always be given to you in the ideal way or the same way, you may have some issues with how the pivot point is working, which can affect your animation. Now, a perfect example for this, if we go to the player frog, when we want to extract all of the individual images, we go to right click on the texture, sprite actions and extract sprites. Now this is what I did very quickly just a moment ago on the heart texture over here. And I just let it choose the auto extraction. So you can see the way that this is working. We have the outline color, which is the outline around every image that it finds based on the transparency around it. So it's gonna find every ending pixel and class that as the bound. Now this will extract all of these so we can do this again. If you wanted to change the naming template, you can change this here, and then each one will be named something like T underscore player frog underscore sprites, etc. So we can do that. We can see that here. Naming functions quite useful because it adds the number. So we know that we've got 25 of these images here based on a zero based array of images. Um, and what I wanted to show is basically we've got the idle animation, which is these first two rows. Then we've got the running animation. We have the jumping animation down here and the falling animation or the other way around. So the first 11, so zero to 10 are the idle animation. So the way that we then make our animation from the sprites is to right click on a selection of sprites that we want to build that animation, making sure the numbering is in order. So this is going to be the start of the animation to the end. So this will automatically put it in the right order for us and then create a flip book from this. So nice and simple, remember the flip book is our animation. The sprites are the image that we can bring into the world and the textures build all of that information. Now, if we bring in this animation, we can see immediately there's a little bit of a problem. So I'm gonna drag this up. I'm gonna press end. So the end key will drop this down to the floor. And we can see that the feet are kind of jumping up and the head is moving down. And that is because it's based on this central pivot point. So it looks like he's kind of floating a little bit. Ideally, the way that this animation was meant to work is the feet stay perfectly still and everything is moving up and down around that pivot point. So if we go in here, we can see again, that's not quite ideal. That's not quite how the animation was meant to run. So we can manually fix this if we wanted to by selecting all of these assets. So again, zero to 10, we can right click on these and we can go to asset actions and then bulk edit via property matrix. And what this will let us do is we can drag and select all of these or shift and select all of these, go to the sprite options. And remember I said it's because the pivot point is out of place that that's broken because this is going from the center. And because each image wasn't the same size, it was based on where the pixels ended. And obviously that's gonna change from image to image. Uh, it's kind of confused where that is. So what we want to do is change this from the center center to bottom center. Now, if we do that, we can see the pivots jump down here and that is more of how the animation was meant to look. So that's an easy fix. If you do get assets like this and that's the way you have to work with things, then that's perfectly fine. We've got ways that we can fix this. Just to show another example, we can change this to something like top left and that will completely break it. Uh, but the animation's now playing from the top left of the, the sprite. So everything's moving up to that pivot point. Okay, so that's one way that we can fix it now. I'm not gonna keep these because I've actually set this up in a specific way. So we'll delete these for now. If you ever do that type of process as well, make sure that you remove the thing from the world. We still have what is now kind of a null reference to a, an asset that doesn't exist any longer. So we'll get rid of tfrog from the world. And what I'll do next is pretty much the same process, but I'll show you the way that I intended this to work. So we're gonna right click on the player frog again. We'll go to sprite actions, extract sprites again. But this time, the reason I've put this in a grid is I've made sure to set up everything. I actually dragged everything 128 units away from each last image. So we can change this from auto to grid. And we can see it finds the entire grid. It's not quite worked out where the images are. And we can change the cell width from 1024, which is the full size to 128. So we can see we've now separated those off and then the height to 128 and that will now ex extract everything at exactly the same size. So we get a little bit of headroom on these, but we can see that all of the feet are being cut at the same place. The animations where the character is meant to be in the air, again, that's accounted for with that same size grid space. The problem with this does come that you get these extra cells. These will be cut out and classed as a sprite. We can fix some of that by the number of cells that we want to cut down to, which I'm going to set to six. 
because we only have these six that we really want. But you'll see that this also helps us with the naming convention um, and we can very easily create our animations by using this. So what I'll do is I'll extract this. So we now have, like I said, this is separated quite nicely. We know that all of these are the idle up to the first empty space. All of these are run up to the next empty space. Then we've got full and we have jump. So what we're going to do is we'll recreate that flipbook. I'll right click on this, create flipbook. Now I'm going to keep this one. So I'm going to name this one FB for flipbook underscore idle or player idle. Okay, so again, the naming convention for flipbooks is FB underscore name of the flipbook. Textures are T underscore the name of the texture and so on. Because there are so many sprites, I'm actually going to get a little bit lazy and not rename these. I'm just going to shift select all of these and drag that into the sprites folder just to get them out of the way. We now know that we can delete these empty sprites as well. And we can just kind of go along in this order and uh, it makes the process fairly painless for us. Now you can see that because that has the exact size that it knows that each image is, that has actually worked for us correctly to begin with. We're not getting that unwanted falling animation. So next we can do the same thing with our running. So we'll shift select all of these, right click, create flipbook, name this one FB underscore player run. And we have our running animation. Now I think this speed works quite well. The first thing that comes to mind here is that idle looks a little bit intense because it's animating so quickly. And it's really just meant to be when the player is doing nothing. So I'm going to change the frames per second from 15 down to something like eight. And that looks a little bit better to me. You can change that to whatever you want it to be, but this is just basically changing the playback rate. So if you want them to be very energetic, then we've got something higher. Or like I said, something a little bit more chill, we can go a little bit lower. Again, we'll drag all of these into the sprite folder. We won't be using these again, but of course they're referenced in the flipbook, so we do need those to still exist. Likewise with the textures, it goes without saying, I would hope. And that leaves these two, so we've got the falling animation. Now this is quite interesting. When you're working with something like this, even as a single frame, we still need to make this a flipbook because that's what our component in the 2D character class is expecting. So we'll call this one FB underscore fall, and we'll call this one, create this one, sorry, and call this one FB underscore jump. Now if we open both of these, I'm just shift selecting and pressing enter, we can see that this is still playing. We can save a little bit of memory, I guess, here by turning this down to zero. So it's not going to loop. It's not going to actually play the animation, but this is now the asset type that we need for these two animations uh, as they are technically animations. Okay, so that is all of our player flip books ready to go. Again, we can grab these sprites and we'll drop that into the sprites folder and then we can remove all of these empty cells. That leaves us with our flip books. So we can move our player flip books into the flipbook folder. And that is basically the uh, project setup that we're going for with the structure here. Now, the next thing is our mask player. The reason I have this, I just wanted to show another example of where certain things won't work and you need to kind of jump in between. So these have been set up exactly the same way, 128 units apart from each other. But because of the size of this player and the, uh, the headpiece that it has, if we were to come into the extract sprites option again the automatic one wouldn't work here at all because these two the feet are actually touching the headpiece so these would always be extracted together and completely break that first setup so again although for the frog there was kind of a workaround for this one there wouldn't be a workaround and you would have to know the grid scaling uh, and again separate this by 128 on each and you can see that cuts through just where the foot and the headpiece are kind of uh, touching each other so just something that I realized was going to be a useful example. Like I said, I'm not going to use the player mask. I'm actually going to get rid of this now, but I just wanted to show that quick example. Likewise, the same thing actually happens with the bat. So we'll do this one together. Uh, we'll go to the bat sprite extractions and extract this. So again, because these wingspans are touching, it classes these two as a single bat. And then the rest of these are working perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is we'll change this to a grid. This is a complete width of 1,288 and we have seven bat images. So divided by seven and we'd have a cell width of 184. Should be yeah so that would be exactly the amount that we need to cut off so we can now see that they're not the same size but that's perfectly fine remember we have those pivot overrides if we need them but that's now cutting right in between those two wings going right up to that wing so that's the size that we need uh, the height is perfectly fine 120 it's picked up what the maximum is for all of those so again we'll extract these we will create a flip book we'll call this one fb underscore bat and we'll just check that that has worked and in fact we didn't need to do any pivot Offset so that looks perfect. So again, move these into the sprites. We can move that into the flipbook. And we're just basically going to do this for the rest of them. So for the hearts, 
as we've seen previously. This actually works if we just do the sprite extraction, go to extract sprites, and this one will actually work with the auto extract. So we can right click on this, create flipbook, call it FB underscore hearts, and just double check. That is pulsing from the middle, which is what we want anyway. So that has been set to perfectly fine. And the final one, um, I'm gonna choose the option here that we're going to for the spring we're going to right click again we'll go to the extract option and i actually can't remember if i set this up to be grid based so we'll have a look into this i think i might have done and yeah we can see that all of these are on the ground if we do a 128 by 128 grid it means we just need to get rid of the empty cells and then we can select all of our spring animation points create a flip book call this one fb underscore spring and that works perfectly so it stays grounded and it does a small pushing of animation so just to tidy up again flipbooks in the flipbook folder and sprites in the sprite folder and you can control click to deselect the things you don't want move those in and we're done so what that means we can close all of these windows we've kind of finished with those unless you wanted to change the playback speeds we can now go to our player base class inside of this we want to go to our sprite uh, and in fact, first of all, we want to get rid of this cube. So I'll delete the cube. We'll go to the sprite. And in here, we can now change our default source flipbook to our FB underscore, let's say, player idle, which gives us an idea of the size of the player. Now, I know that we're going to need to move this up a little bit because of the pivot point isn't quite in the middle of the capsule. So we're going to move that up just a little bit. And then we can grab our capsule and we'll drag the capsule size down. And we want this to be probably just inside of the feet. Uh, we don't want it to look like the player's hovering. So we're gonna make the capsule a little bit uh, smaller than the player is. So it looks as though it's resting quite nicely on the floor. And if we try this, this should drop into the world. And there we go, we can see that we're moving around. It doesn't look as though we're hovering. And as we get to the edge, that looks about right. So uh, we obviously want to start playing different animations when we move around, but this is definitely a good start to where we need to be. We have the 2D animation system now in, and we can start getting an idea of what it's like being in the world. So this is kind of like what I was talking about in the trailer to these videos. We've got the game Octopath Traveler, which is a 2D flipbook essentially moving around in the 3D world. So we could, if we add new dimensions to this, have a very similar game using these 2D animations, but having this kind of 2.5D or 3D world to interact with. So again, another benefit of doing all of this, although it's not an engine which people really consider being kind of 2D ready or 2D optimized, we do have some pretty cool features that we can make with the Unreal Engine with a kind of 2D hybrid. So again, at this stage, we're getting quite far and make sure that you're saving your project as you go along to keep all of those updates that we're making. Um, and another thing I've just remembered, if you are closing and opening the project, you are probably being greeted with a new map each time. So what we can do to bypass that for now is go to the maps and mode section. Uh, because we have our main map saved, we can change the editor startup map. Uh, you're getting the template default, which is just that empty map, similar to what we have, uh, but not the one that we've been working in. So what we can do is we'll change this to main. So now every time we close and open the project, that will default to be the map to open. And likewise, if you ever want to give this to somebody else to play, we can change the game default map to main as well. So again, they'll be greeted with this map that we're working in. And we're gonna start making changes to this soon. Uh, to make this more 2D based, we'll be using our painted tile map and seeing how all of that works. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.